My name is Andrew Diggs. I'm a commercial fishing vessel safety examiner for Sector Virginia. Today we're going to talk about immersion suits. If you operate a documented vessel beyond the boundary line, north of 32 degrees north latitude, you need an immersion suit for each person on board. There's different styles of immersion suits and different sizes. Different sizes identified by the color of the bag. This one's labeled intermediate, this one's labeled universal, and this one's labeled jumbo or oversized. Ensure that the person in which it's assigned to is suitable for the size of the immersion suit. When we inspect the emergency suit, we take them out of the bags. First thing I like to do is see when it was manufactured. In this case, this one was manufactured in 2011. Where these are going to fail is where they were put together. So it's critical that we take a look at the seams, the crotch, the armpits, the pads. This one looks like it's all good and well. We service the zipper or cycle the zipper. This one appears to be working fine. In the event that it was a little sticky, we provide zipper wax for the operator. We would wax the zipper, cycle it again. We check that the emergency suit has a light. If you're operating beyond the boundary line, you're required to have a light, a Coast Guard approved light. The light has to work. Check the battery dates and so forth. The retroflective tape on this one appears to be fair, good and serviceable. The immersion suit needs to be labeled for the official number of the boat, the person who it's assigned, or if it was a state registered boat, it could also have the state registration numbers on it. This suit is lacking that information. We may choose to provide the operator with a Sharpie so he can identify the suit and bring it into compliance. This is a universal size, has an inflatable air bladder. We want to take a critical look at the oral inflation tube. Again, operating beyond the boundary line, required to have a Coast Guard approved light. This suit was worn in, again, 2011. Cycle the zipper. Apply a simple bit of zipper wax, seemed a little sticky. cycle it again and when you stow the suit we like to stow it with it just a little bit off the bottom in the case you get your shirt sleeve caught in it you're able to push it back down and then zip it back up this one here appears to have good retroflective tape it's identified for the vessel we're on in this condition it would comply with Coast Guard regulations the last one I'll check is it like I mentioned an oversized suit Suitable for some of the bigger crew members on board. All the inspection points are the same. This one was born in 2013. This is a ring in case it had to be hoisted via helicopter. They would be able to use it or facilitate that rescue with this ring. The only thing this one is lacking is the name of the person it's assigned to or the official number or the name of the boat. Again, we may choose to simply hand the operator a Sharpie. He can create the compliance for this emergency. In its current condition, minus the missing name, the emergency suit appears to be suitable for its intended service within Coast Guard regulations.